What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm really excited to have you here because I have always avoided buying toys because I know how slippery that slope is. But recently I decided I just can't help myself to something specific. And this is more than just an, a toy unboxing for me. This is going to be something a little more special. So before I ramble too long, don't forget to like and subscribe, comment, connect, follow, do whatever you do on the platform you're on. Just look for my furry face inside of an orange circle and click all the buttons next to it. So let's start with uh, a little tease, I guess. So I, uh, I ordered this off of uh, eBay and it came in. And uh, I'm pretty excited to open it up. I've actually had it here for a couple of days now and it has taken um, everything within me not to open it because I knew I wanted to open this as content because of everything else that's going to go into this video as you will um, slowly put together. Um, so I didn't want to open it without being able to actually film it and things have been so crazy lately. I haven't had time to sit down in front of a camera and open it. So I'm really excited to get this open today. Um, I guess I want to start with, um, you know, well, let's go ahead and open this and see what it is. Cause I I've waited long enough, right? <laughs> All right. So this is from Captain Simeon and the Space Monkeys. This was a show that came on when uh, when I was a kid. In fact, um, I have a few notes here. So this show was, uh, it ran from uh, September the 7th of 96 uh, all the way until June 21st of 97. It was 26 episodes long, one single season, and it is a complete shame in my opinion. Now, this, I'm not sure exactly who made this. I believe it was, it was produced by Hallmark Entertainment and Monkey Shine Productions. Um, and the reason I know this show is because there used to be a uh, TV station called um, UPN. I'm sure most of the people in my demographic are familiar with this, but if you're a little bit younger, you might not. Um, when I was growing up, there were Saturday morning cartoons and um, then there was also like some Sunday morning cartoons. And uh, the big ones were Fox Kids and WB. And they had like big Saturday morning blocks. They had a lot of very popular shows. And I watched a lot of them. Um, some of them I remember much better than others. But um, at the end of the day, like I never had like the same level of fandom, I guess, as like a lot of other people I know in my age group. But UPN, they had this Sunday morning block. And... So I would get up like very early and um, I would get dressed, I would, uh, for, I would get dressed for church. And so while everybody else in the house was getting ready for church, I would sit there and like eat my bowl of cereal and I would watch this UPN block of cartoons. And um, that included like, um, one of my favorites was uh, um, Ghostbusters, the animated series. And, and this is kind of where I talk about like, my childhood was kind of different from a lot of people's because I watched Ghostbusters the animated series and I absolutely loved it. It wasn't until I was like, I don't know, 13, 14, 15 years old that I actually saw the Ghostbusters movies. Um, it was just something that never really interested uh, my parents and so it was never around. Like we never had a lot of the movies that other people grew up on um, because my parents, they never really watched a lot of movies. Most of what I watched was um, TV. And I never really have had the same uh, level of attraction to movies as a lot of other people. Um, I find movies to be extremely awkward because it's like you have to block out two to three hours of time. And then this is all you're going to get is this two to three hours of information, you know. And I always liked TV because I don't, I never had like that really long attention span. And so I love TV. You can watch like 30 minutes here. Um, and, and you get something or like now, especially since it's all bingeable, like I can sit down and watch two or three episodes if I have time, 
But at the same time, I can just like throw on an episode and watch it real quick and still feel like I got something um, that day without having to like lose my entire day to watch a two hour movie, you know? So that was always me. I've always enjoyed TV more. And so, you know, I watched a lot of these cartoons on UPN and uh, Captain Simeon and the Space Monkeys was by far one of my favorite shows. It is a uh, kind of a, uh, I guess like a hard sci-fi kind of show. And probably one of my earliest loves of sci-fi. Growing up, my dad was a big fan of uh, Star Trek. He had been watching Star Trek forever. Star Wars was not something that was in my house. My dad never really cared for it, I guess, because he was a Trekkie. Um, but I, I picked up a lot of Star Trek because I was always around it. And so Captain Simeon and the Space Monkeys is kind of a, a hard sci-fi cartoon. Something that I've really learned re-watching it um, as an adult is that um, it, it was never dumbed down. Like, there are some, like, crazy concepts in this show, and that's probably why it didn't have a massive audience. But it was something that I loved about it. Like, I learned a lot in that show because they didn't dumb anything down. The main villain is half black hole, half human. And um, therefore, he is uh, susceptible to, like, human problems, you know, uh, and his goal is to become 100% black hole. He wants to become a whole black hole so that he can basically swallow the entire universe and create a new Big Bang that would create recreate the universe within him, you know. And then he would be like the god because he would rule everything. And so Captain Simeon is a... Uh, he was a chimpanzee that was part of NASA's um, space experiments in like the 60s. And during his mission, his rocket got knocked out of orbit and like lost in space. And um, the, uh, I guess the life support systems and stuff failed. And because of the temperature of space, he froze. So he drifted like light years away from Earth and everything. And there's some aliens out there. These aliens, they don't actually have a... They, they're, they're such an advanced race that their name cannot be spoken. It can only be thought. And so the way they represent that in the show is that their name is actually just silent. Uh, it would be like, hi, my name is... And I'm here to talk to you today. You know, so every time that they... It's like a running gag, you know? Like, their name is never spoken because they're too advanced. Um, but they, they find Captain Simeon and they think that this is like the most advanced humanity is or whatever. And that, that, uh, his name is Charlie. Then, um, when they pick him up, they think he's like their savior. You know, it's, it's been foretold in their lore or whatever, that a savior will come from a foreign planet. Um, and it, it, he'll be able to save them all. And so they meet this, this chimpanzee and he's not anything special, you know, but they think he's supposed to be the savior. So they're able to use technology to, um, give him a slightly more humanoid form, kind of like you see in here, uh, or on the back here. Um, and they give him intelligence, and they also, like, use, like, these portals to, like, reach back over to Earth, and they pick up a couple of other, um, I guess, like, monkeys. And uh, But they're all, like, different breeds of monkey. And uh, so they also, like, kind of give them some intelligence and stuff, and develop them and so that's the crew um charlie once he's uh given intelligence and everything um then he becomes uh captain simeon uh captain charlie simeon i guess is his full name or i'm sorry captain chuck simeon um and so then they go around space and it's very much like it reminds me of like star trek meets firefly like they have a ship that is I don't know if they have the whole thing here. Yeah, you can't see it here, but it, it's uh, like a five-part ship. It looks like a cool spaceship, and then all the parts break off and go in different directions, and each member of the team can fly them around. Um, there's Captain Simeon, and I really like him. He's like a cool character, very in charge. Um, you have Shaolin, which is like a female, uh, I think it's a snub-nosed monkey, um, basically she's like an Asian type monkey and she was treated as a goddess, like by monks. And so whenever she joins the team, she's kind of like second in charge. She's got like great martial arts skills, but she also has like this, uh, this Buddhist, uh, Zen likeness about her. Um, and she's usually kind of like, 
I wouldn't say like in control, but she's like the most at peace, I guess, you know, she's usually like very calm and collected in different situations. Um, you have spider who is a spider monkey, but he's also like from, uh, he was like, uh, kind of like a rogue thief kind of guy. He was, a uh, for an organ grinder, he would go around and collect the money, you know, and he was a pickpocket for the organ grinder. Um, and so he like talks like he's from like New Jersey or New York or something, you know, um, but he's kind of a funny character. He often gets in trouble because, you know, he's kind of like, uh, they'll go into like, um, an abandoned spaceship or something. And the captain's like, don't touch anything. We don't know anything about this. And then spider will see like a, a pile of bananas. And so he tries to steal all the bananas and that in turn, like leads it down, down roads of trouble. And so spider often, uh, causes the problems. However, he's also like really good friends and he's very manipulative as well, but he's good friends with Gore, the gorilla. Um, and this is, a, he's an, uh, uh, he's a gorilla from like Uganda. Um, and he has, he's kind of like the Hulk, like as he was being in the machine that gives them the intelligence and everything, uh, he goes crazy and like destroys it. So he only gets like half the intelligence. So he's very childlike in nature, but then when he gets angry, his eyes turn red and, uh, he gets like real, like uh, berserker style, you know, like the Hulk. Um, and eventually they even get to the point where he, um, some other things happen to him and, uh, he's cursed with actually growing like real giant and stuff. Um, and again, that's really cool because in the series, they kind of predict that in like the fourth episode, he starts having these dreams where he's all like giant and like destroys everything and, um, hurts his friends and stuff. And so he lives with that fear of the monster that's inside of him. Um, and so that's really cool. And then the, the fifth and final member of their team is Splitsy. And this is an orangutan that, um, he has split personalities. Um, he has one that's kind of like a, like a backwoods, um, I don't know, like some, I guess like kind of a stereotypical, like, I don't know, somebody from like Alabama or Kentucky or something, I guess. Um, very tropey, I guess. But the other half of his personality is like this genius, um, scientist, you know, and so they're, they're aware that each other exists in the same body. And so they're often like arguing back and forth. And, um, the whole show is just like wrapped in this like quick witted banter. And then you have, uh, Nebula, who is like the half black hole, uh, half human guy that's trying to basically conquer the universe so he can rebuild it in his own image. And, um, he has a henchman named Rhesus two, who was like a Rhesus monkey on this other like alien planet. And, uh, the gist of that is like the planet, like Rhesus was going to die because the planet was destroying those things beyond his control. And so he was kind of helpless and, um, Nebula like plucked him out of that and gave him like robotic body parts to replace the parts he had lost during the destruction of the planet and all that. And, um, he, his brain is open, but he can switch brains. So like, you know, he'll, he'll be in a situation where he needs a plan to take out, um, Captain Simeon. And so he'll be like switching brains because they have different ideas and he'll come up with all these different plans by switching his brains. Um, and, and he's the one that usually engages with Captain Simeon and the crew because, um, Nebula is like this big black hole thing, you know? And, um, so it's really cool, you know, and there was this single toy line and I was like, well, if I'm going to like go down the slippery slope, let me see what the toys look like. And they looked awesome. They have this really cool packaging, um, you know, and they, I don't know if it'll work because, uh, you know, there's a little bit of, it's supposed to be a bubble right there. Um, but essentially all the packaging, you could like move them around and it looks like they're floating in space. And so they're about $20 a toy. There's, uh, the five heroes. And then there's a couple of vehicles that I found, uh, Oh yeah, look, look, this is whenever they turn, uh, gore into the big monster. Um, and so, yeah, that's what he fears. Um, uh, oh, they have evil nebula and, uh, recess too. Yeah. So they have pretty much like all the major players in the show. There's some other side characters that come in here and there. Um, but this was a great show. I loved it as a kid. I think it's one of the things that really hooked me in with like sci-fi and space and my love of the unknown. And, Rewatching the series as an adult just like shows me like this show never dumbed anything down and um, it, it was definitely a huge influence on my life. I love this show. It it holds up in the sense like it doesn't look anything different from what I remember. Sometimes you go back and watch shows and it's like oh yeah like I thought this looked good but it doesn't. 
um, this show still looks exactly how I remember it from my childhood. And so um, this is a property I have looked into. I have Googled who owns the rights to Captain Simeon and nothing really seems to come up. The entire 26 episodes are on uh, YouTube. You can watch them like they're not copyright pulled or anything like that. Not only that, but like I have a playlist of all those episodes that I found and there's still like other people that, so I mean, there's like multiple um, cuts, I guess, of these episodes and stuff that are all over YouTube. So it seems like nobody actually owns the rights or they're at least not enforcing them. And that's really interesting to me because I would love to do something with this property. If anybody's watching this and like they, they have a bunch of money and they would like to develop something get at me like we could pick up the rights for this i have so many ideas for how to turn this into a comic book um much like how we're seeing a renaissance of a lot of the stuff from the 90s that we all grew up on um i mean most notable probably the power rangers they took that and they kept the spirit of what the show was but they made it into something that works for an older audience that's gonna you know nitpick at everything and i could do that with this i believe it like i know it like I have so many ideas. I don't know if anybody that's watching this has ever uh, read uh, Fred Van Lente's run on uh, Valiant's The Psylords. But uh, that series, despite... I didn't really care for how like every single character in that book seemed to have amnesia. That was a little bit frustrating. But at the end of the day, I loved a lot of the concepts that he was using in there. Um, and, and I think I could do something very similar if somebody would... Uh, you know, pay an artist to work with me on this. I think I could develop an absolutely amazing series out of this um, that might develop some new fans. So, like I said, get at me. What I do want to do now, I'm not a toy collector. And honestly, I've never understood the idea of having something that you're never going to do anything with. So, let's open this up. I, I have no, no reason to want to uh, protect this. I mean... The, the packaging is cool. I want to be able to look at the box and stuff, but uh, I want to play with the toys. <laughs> so let's open this up and see what it looks like up close and personal. Oh my God, this is so cool. This, man... I'm really impressed. Uh, I Look, I don't know anything about toys. I'm sure everybody else would look at this and be like, look how poorly painted it is and all that. I don't care, dude. Like, <laughs> This is... Uh, man, I, I like Charlie. I think he was a, a great character. I really don't have... I don't think there's a character in the show I didn't like, to be honest. But um, Charlie was a great leader. I think I, I've always kind of connected to leaders. He reminds me of like Leonardo and... Captain Mal and, um, you know, there's a little bit of Captain Kirk in there as well. And, uh, so yeah, I mean, this is, this is awesome. Like I love this character and whenever I was deciding, uh, what figure I wanted to get first, um, this was a pretty easy choice for me. Not because he was necessarily my absolute favorite. Like I said, I liked all the characters, but, um, there's something about him that I thought was really cool. And if I'm going to start somewhere, I'm going to start with, uh, the first character in the show, like the very first episode you meet um, Captain Simeon, like right off the bat. And uh, he kind of tells his story of how he ended up where he's at right now. Um, and then he kind of goes on a risk rescue mission to uh, collect the rest of the uh, characters for the show. Let's see. This is like 90s technology, so I'm very concerned I'm about to break everything. Uh, but this looks like a grappling hook. Boom. Let's see, does this fire? And well at that. Wow. Yeah, I'm probably going to regret that later, but that was cool. Hmm. Man. I don't know, uh, I don't know how much I like watching a grown man play with toys on YouTube, but I'm here for this. So, uh, yeah, let's see what's in here. Oh, 
Oh, nice. Okay. Well, that's cool. Yeah. So this is uh, this is our Captain Simeon, our space monkey, the head of the crew. And uh, yeah. So this is it, man. Like I, I am very excited to have this, and uh, I already have some ideas as to like what I'm going to uh, kind of like do with setting him up and, and giving him a, a proper place to uh, hang out, you know. Captain Simeon's really cool because uh, he has feet for hand or hands for feet, I guess, would actually be the way to say that. <laughs> and uh, so he would also often uh, swing into different scenarios and he'd have four guns he well usually he'd have like two in his hands and then he would uh or he'd have two in his hands or in his uh i keep saying the wrong thing um usually you see he would have like two a gun in each foot and so he would come swinging in he'd be swinging with his arms and shooting with his feet um great character i love this guy this is so cool uh very excited to have something like this um, like I said, I've always avoided toys and because I know how fast that turns into a snowball, but um, I really I really like this. This is cool stuff, and I'm afraid that I'm about to uh, start ordering more. <laughs> so, yes, it's a very real thing. But that's all I have today. I hope that you guys learned something really, learned about something you didn't know anything about. I'm sure... Based on my research and stuff, it seems like pretty much nobody knows that the show even existed. And, uh, you know, so that makes me very happy that I was able to bring this content to YouTube and uh, maybe, you know, put this series on a couple of people's radars. So look for some links in the description. I'm sure I'm going to put some there. Um, I'm probably, I'm probably going to go ahead and put the intro because I really like the intro to the show. So I'm probably going to put that at the end of this video. So uh, stick around and check that out, and uh, until next time, keep flipping pages. Captain Simeon and the Space Monkeys! <laughs>